Over the last couple of months, I've been working on my own piece of software that allows Cubase and Nuendo users to import their track color palettes and quickly edit them or generate new palettes all using this intuitive browser tool. Let's say I want to open up my Cubase color palette for all my tracks and I want to create a new palette quickly. First, I need to import the default XML file. To find this, there are some notes down below here for the locations for Windows and Mac OS. I'll let you guys read those over. So I'm just gonna open up the default XML for Cubase. Now you can create a backup. I highly recommend you do so and store this somewhere separately before you import it into the editor and make any changes because then you can always use this backup to revert to the original settings if something doesn't work out. For me, I'm just going to skip and import our XML into the editor so we can see the color palette. So this is the palette that's currently assigned to all my Cubase projects. And I'm going to remove all of the colors for this palette and start afresh. To add colors using this tool, well, there's many different ways. One is by adding a single color and we can choose the color by double clicking on it and playing around with this hue, saturation and vibrant settings. We can go between colors using the arrow tools here that are in the swatch list. And if you want, build a palette in that way, although very slow and take you some time. A slightly quicker way, if you're a little bit more prepared, is using the eyedropper tool. You can have a reference image with different colors on, and you can use this tool to extract colors from anywhere that you click on your screen. So if I take this onto a different screen, and extract these colors, you can build a palette in that way. Now, what's also useful about when you add single colors is that you can copy the hex codes like this, and these can then be used to generate a gradient from. So with that hex code for the pink, that will be our starting color. And then we have our steps preview here to show you how many different colors it will create. And we have control over the end color. So in auto mode, it will automatically um, make the color lighter towards the end of the gradient, sharing the same hue. If you don't want to use auto mode like this and you want to create your own manual end color, then you can enable manual end color here. And, um, or you can do it from the main window here. And this will decouple the controls so you can start creating some pretty funky gradients. Now, once you've had fun creating all of your colors, you can reorganize them quite easily uh, by using drag and drop functions. Um, if you want to reorder rows, you can turn on row mode, which is also bound to the short key R on your keyboard. And we can reorder rows like this. Um, we can delete individual swatches by clicking X. We can duplicate a swatch by holding control and double clicking. And we can delete entire rows by holding shift and clicking on the X for any swatch in a list. Some of the other controls we have are to do with the orientation of the palette. So if we want to flip the palette, we can. If we want to invert it, reverse it, shuffle it, organize by hue, saturation or lightness, we have the options to do that. Now, the final control I'm going to show you is to do with this here, the balance mode. So let's go ahead and load up, for example, Jason Graves palette here. And I want to harmonize all the colors and try and make the palette more consistent. We can use the harmonize mode here and it will go through the entire palette. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice. And it'll do its best to try and balance things out between hue, saturation and vibrance to, to make it pop a little bit more essentially. Now it can overdo it if you want a more softer looking palette. So you don't have to use this. The alternative mode is called Pastelize, which will try and retain that softness, um, but try and improve the relationships overall between the colors to make them more pastel. Once you've created your palette, you can go ahead and save it as a preset. To do that, come over to the top right here and give it a name. So we'll call it, uh, I don't know, idea one, then go to save JSON. It'll prepend the file name with CPE underscore preset, and then it will have the title. So in this case, CPE underscore preset underscore idea one and if i then clear my list and say oh i want to load that preset up again i can go to load json file and select it and it'll bring back that swatch setup now when it comes to palette presets there are some included ones in the palette library um, you have my own which is the custom color 
scheme and you also have one that's been provided by Jason Graves, an award-winning composer, really great guy. There's links to socials as well for these colours and the idea with the curated preset library is that I want to get a community thing going where people can vote on each other's palettes and then they'll end up here basically, the most voted ones end up in this uh, library. So we'll talk more on that on a different date, but that's the idea with it. Now when it comes to finally exporting your default XML, you can click on export up here, there'll be a pop-up dialogue that will give you a five second timer before you can download the file. If you wish to make a donation just to say thank you for the work that I've put into creating this free tool, feel free to use the donation button, get us a coffee, a sandwich, whatever. Don't go crazy and then just download your file. Now you might get prompted saying this, oh, this might be harmful. You can ignore this. It's, there's nothing harmful. And then you'll have your default XML file. With the default XML file, what we need to do with this one we've just downloaded is use it to replace the default XML file in Cubase. So uh, that directory that we originally used to get the default XML, navigate back to it, copy and replace the default XML in that location. And then open Cubase, create a new project, open up the floating color menu, and drag this over and let's just add a track in so they're not grayed out. You can see that color palette that we saved um, from the browser has been applied in the project here. Now, if you've opened an old project and it's using the old color palette and you want to update it, go to project, project color setup. And then with this window, go to options, then reset color set to default. So the current palette that's applied to the default XML is the default palette and you just have to click on this to remind Cubase to use the default palette. If you want to completely revert the default XML back to the factory color settings, then you would use this one here. Okay, so keep that in mind. And that's it. That's how you use the color palette editor. It seems like a lot, but once you get used to the controls, it's very quick and easy to work with. I hope you find this tool useful and for my first attempt, I think it's not gone too bad so far.